Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Shooting Lights Up. Great shows for you to catch from the Playmakers Blog Never Ramley, talk hosted by yours truly here. And Cowboys talk hosted by the Bear Man out of Zaka's Eye. So y'all can check those out and get you ready for what you can expect from us next season of the football season. As you can see here, you see the numbers, you see the status of how the conference finals went. This is where we at right here. Nuggets in six, Lakers in six, Celtics in seven. Miami and six, and then we have our final four. Here's our final four teams. Lakers, Nuggets, Heat, Celtics. And to begin our preview, we're starting in the Western Conference Finals, where it is the Los Angeles Lakers led by LeBron James and Anthony Davis taking on the top team in the West. That would be the Denver Nugget, led by Nikhil Jokic, the Joker, Jamal Murray, and Michael Porter Jr. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Woo! Too exciting. Now, how would this go? The Lakers were a seven seed, and they're in the final four. The Nuggets have been dominating their first two series. They put a whooping on the Minnesota Timberwolves in five games. You seen what they did to the Phoenix Suns in game six down in Phoenix. The Nuggets are not playing games, okay? The Lakers coming out, they are taking game ones from both the Grizzlies and the Warriors on the road. And they are finishing them off at home in game sixes at Crypto.com Arena. The matchup people are most going to tune into is Anthony Davis versus Nikhil Jokic. Who wins the battle? Is it AD or is it a Joker? That's going to be one battle. Another battle is what does LeBron James bring to the table in this series? Because he's been on cool control for most of these playoffs. Picking his spots on when to take over and when not to take over. And then Jamal Murray. Word has gone around that he is sick. So we'll see if he's able to go in game one, which is will be very shameful if he can't. But what does Jamar Murray bring to the table to help out Nikhil Jokic as the duo of the Denver Nuggets against the duo that is the Los Angeles Lakers? You have Aaron Gordon. You have KCP going against his former team. How would he feel about seeing LeBron James and the Davis and the Lakers in this series? But, 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 but. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who are watching on YouTube, you see that guy right there that's in the middle with the number one on his jersey in blue? That guy right there, that guy there, that guy is Michael Porter Jr. And for me, Michael Porter Jr. is the key to this entire series. If he shows up and shows out, the Lakers are going home. If he doesn't, the Nuggets are going home. Number one in blue needs to be the third wheel for the Denver Nuggets if they want to make it to the NBA Finals. By the way, I forgot to mention this. I forgot to mention this. So let me do this real quick. Let's go back. This is the bubble all over again, ladies and gentlemen. So remember how everybody was like, the bubble don't count, the bubble this, bubble that, bubble that, that, that. <laughs> Three years later, the same four teams that was in the Final Four in the bubble, it's the same four teams we have left. Let's start out throwing that out there. So y'all can complain about the bubble. And in the bubble, the Lakers beat the Nuggets in six games because of Anthony Davis. So can Anthony Davis duplicate what he did in the bubble against the Jokic? Or does the fact that since then, the Joker, who has become a two-time MVP back-to-back -back seasons before this season, has been a monster in these postseason. Now that he has a full team back, even though Jamar Murray is sick from what report has been saying, he has a full loaded team. What do the Lakers do this time against that guy who basically averages a triple-double when he plays? How does the Lakers feel with that? How does Anthony Davis deal with that? 
How does Nikhil Jokic handle Anthony Davis? Because Anthony Davis, when he wants to be a monster, on both ends, by the way, he is a monster, blocking shots, crashing the boards for like 20 plus, and dominating, giving you 20 to 30 pieces. This is going to be an interesting series here, okay? I am begging the Denver Nuggets to end the damn Lakers. Because those of you who know me, you know how I feel about the Los Angeles Lakers. Going all the way back to Kobe and Shaq. So, Denver, I don't give a damn how long it takes. Just end the damn Lakers. So I don't have to deal with them in the in goddamn NBA Finals. In this sickening story of LeBron James in year 20, and if he wins the championship, this is like the last dance. Shut up! I'm sick of it. There ain't no damn last dance. You ever talking about he want to play with his damn son, who's going to USC, by the way, along with Dennis, Dennis Robinson, which is interesting in itself. So when next basketball season comes, I will be paying attention to the USC children because uh, if people say what Brian James is, I'm, I better see it in the USC for the one year he's going to be because I know he's only playing one year. He's going straight to the NBA. So I better see something from Brian James when it comes to USC, which is another team I can't stand because I can't stand the damn Trojans. But I will judge him accordingly, okay? I will judge him accordingly for the season that he puts forward at USC. Now, I'm not predicting anything. I'm not giving a prediction. I just want the Lakers to lose. That's all. I just want the Lakers to lose and get ousted. That is it. And this Western Conference Series is exclusively to ESPN. Here is your scheduling. Tonight is game one, 8.30 after the lottery draft, who would get the number one pick and possibly victory, Juan Boyana. Game two would be Friday. Game three will be in LA for on the 20th, and the 22nd is game four. It will head back to Denver for game five on the 24th, back to LA on the 26th, Memorial Day weekend, if I am correctly. Yes, that would be the beginning of Memorial Day weekend if it gets to game six, and game seven will be that Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. So this series will be over before the month of June gets here at some point in time. That is your Western Conference matchup. Let's head over to the East Coast, where it is a rematch from last year's Eastern Conference Final, where the Miami Heat will meet the Boston Celtics yet again, round number four. Because they met in the bubble. They met last year, no, round three. Round three, round three. Met in the bubble. They met last year, and they're going to meet again this year. Goals reversed this time. Miami was the favorite. Now it's Boston. Because Boston is the real highest remaining team level, even though the Nuggets are the number one team in the West. The Boston Celtics has the best has the best record remaining of the all four teams left. So Boston is the home favorite. And the Heat are the real team. The Miami Heat, just like the Lakers. But the Heat are a eighth seed in the Eastern Conference Finals. Going against the second seed, which is the Boston Celtics. We saw this last year, and this series went all seven games. All seven games. The unfortunate thing is there will be no Tyler Hero in this one who played last year. So the Miami Heat will be down one person. But nevertheless, they haven't stopped Miami Heat from being the Miami Heat because the Miami Heat culture, Heat culture is alive and well in these damn playoffs. Jimmy Butler doing his thing. Bam Adebayo had a terrific series last season, series against the New York Knicks. Can he channel that and bring it to the Boston series? Because they're going to need Bam Adebayo to be the number two guy. They're going to need Kyle Lowry, Matt Struess, Gabe Vincent, Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin's the one you see as number 16. Those guys need to continue to play how they've been playing, being huge contributors to the Miami Heat team. Not just on that, that's only in points, but getting rebounds, hustle plays, defense. You're going to need those guys to step up even more because Jason Tatum might have finally woken up in these playoffs. After a 51 point performance in game seven against the Philadelphia 76ers, he might be ready 
to now take the next step. We shall see, though, because you still got Jalen Brown on that team. You still got Marcus Smart, Al Horford. It's going to be an interesting series. Can we get another seven-game series in this one? Even though Game 7 would be in Boston this time instead of South Beach. TD Garden instead of whatever arena you want to call Miami because they don't change names on any time. You can't even keep up with the name of their arena. It's not even FTS Arena no more. It's something else now. But this series, we know what's going to happen. Jason Tatum versus Jimmy Butler. Jalen Brown and company against Bam Adebayo and company. How does Bam Adebayo contend against Al Horford? Al Horford, who, who put the clamps on Joel and D, the MVP, when it was time. He even blocked him a few times and put the clamps on him as well. How does Bam Adebayo deal with that? Who's going to help Jimmy Butler slow down the duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown? Because even though Jason Tatum went for 51, Tatum Brown also dropped 23. So those two combined to 74 points of that 112. And I am still here to say that Jalen Brown is the catalyst of that team. Because when Jalen Brown's all off and running, it makes it very difficult to beat Boston. Because now you know you got to deal with Jason Tatum anyway. But when Jalen Brown gets going, all hell is breaking loose and it goes Boston's way. But now that Jason Tatum has broke out of his slump and gave you a 50-point piece, how does that make things difficult for the Miami Heat? And there is for sure. This series is going to be one for the ages yet again. It should go at least six, if not the whole seven again, but at least six because Miami's going to fight and claw their way, and we know Boston. They are not the same defensive Boston team that they were last year, which might make things a little more easier for the Heat to get buttons. But we shall see. And at least for my sake that the Boston Celtics did make the conference final because instead of me going 0 for 4, I'm 1 for 3. So the fact that my other three teams that I picked, the Bucks. The Clippers and the Grizzlies all got out in the first goddamn round. The only team that had made it is their Boston Celtics. Okay. And this series is exclusive to TNT. So er Ernie Johnson, Kim the Jets, Mill, Shaquille O'Neal, and Sir Charles Parker will be here for the entire series of this, no matter how far it and that series kicks off tomorrow down in TD Garden of Boston, Massachusetts, with game two being on the 19th. And then the series shifts in game threes and four down to the South Beach, which will be the 24th, I mean, the 21st and the 23rd. You head back to Boston for game five on the 25th. During Memorial Day weekend on the 27th, which is a Saturday, you'll be in South Beach. And then if it goes to whole distance, that will be the 29th of May. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is your conference finals. Lakers, Nuggets, Heat, Celtics for a chance to play in the NBA finals, which will begin Jay, will begin June 1st, Thursday. So as soon as the month of June hit, we know who's playing in the NBA finals. And that game with the end, which is exclusively on ABC. So you have Mike Greenberg, Stephen A. Smith, Jalen Rose, and the one, two, Mike Wilbon covering all games necessary for the NBA Finals. We game one Thursday, June 1st at 8.30 p.m. And then as you can see here, game two will be Sunday, June 4th. Game three, June 7th. Game four is June 9th. Game five is June 12th. Game six is June 15th. And there is, there is a game seven. And then there's a winner-take-all NBA Finals. That would be June 18th on a Sunday. So, ladies.